This video was created by Vinylic Puma of Vinylic Puma Gaming. What's up guys? So I'm back with another video and I figured since Fallout 4 DLC is possibly coming to an end with the Nuka-Cola DLC coming out next month that I would take some time to speculate and discuss some locations where I think that the next Fallout game could take place. Uh, some of this is based on both some in-game as well as real world evidence and speculations. Um, I would also say that areas of the United States and Canada which have been largely ignored in the previous games are the most likely to be featured in the next Fallout game, um, if not make up for most of the next game's setting. Um, otherwise, we could also end up in a more familiar region of, like, say, Southern California and Nevada, where both the first two Fallout games take place, as well as New Vegas. All right, so today we will be going over the top six new cities and locations uh, that may be the setting of the next Fallout game. Number six. San Francisco, California, and that is located in the Northwest Commonwealth, as well as parts of the Southwest Commonwealth. I think this is a possible location because in Fallout 4, while you're in Kellogg's like dream sequence, uh, we get a vision of what looks like the Golden Gate Bridge outside of his window while I guess he's talking to his wife. Um, and in Fallout 2, you can visit a location called San Francisco, which is essentially part of former San Francisco that we all know. And according to the Fallout Wiki, because I haven't played Fallout 2 yet, uh, there is a Brotherhood of Steel outpost there. Um, and the population of San Francisco consists of the Shi, which are the descendants of former Chinese submarine officers, as there's supposedly like some submarine wreckage off the coast. I think San Francisco is a possible location for the game simply because the first two games, along with New Vegas, took place in parts of California and Nevada. Uh, so you could feasibly have descendants of characters that appeared in some of the previous games, and depending on whether you want to stage this conflict before or after the events of Fallout 4, I mean, you could have those same characters from Fallout 2, or if it's after Fallout 4, you could have uh, some of the characters' descendants in the game. Sort of like a Sharon Rose Cassidy from Fallout New Vegas. Uh, I believe you interacted with her father in Fallout 2. It's worth mentioning that San Francisco really spearheaded counterculture during the 50s, 60s, and 70s in our timeline. And maybe we could have some crazy stuff like that uh, in the Fallout universe as well. Number five, Chicago, Illinois. Midwest Commonwealth. Uh, in Fallout New Vegas, after discovering all of EDE's logs, you discover there is or was an enclave outpost in or somewhere near Chicago, Illinois. Uh, and it could be interesting to encounter enclave remnants in this location, especially if the next Fallout game takes place either before or after the events of Fallout 4. In Fallout 3, it's mentioned that Owen Lyons and the East Coast chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel were originally sent west to not only reach the Capital Wasteland, but also make contact with a Brotherhood of Steel airship that went down in the Chicago Illinois region. Um, Owen Lyons was ultimately unsuccessful in this endeavor and ends up discovering the pit instead. So it's also likely we could have a Brotherhood of Steel detachment or at least the remnants of a Brotherhood detachment in this area. And it would be extremely interesting if they possessed the same power armor that's frequently used by the Midwest Brotherhood during the events of Fallout Tactics. Another game that I need to play. It also could be that some of the trigger men that we see in Fallout 4 are inspired by the classic Chicago mobsters from the 20s, uh, complete with Thompson machine guns and all. And so maybe the trigger men actually originated uh, from like parts of post-war Chicago. So that could be an interesting area to visit in the future. Number four, the state of Alaska. And this is going to be part of the Northwest Commonwealth. In Fallout 3, we were in what was essentially a simulation of the Battle of Anchorage that took place in parts of Alaska during the Chinese occupation before all the nuclear bombs fell. However, we haven't actually been to Alaska after the nuclear bombs dropped. In our current timeline, many powerful oil companies, particularly 
ExxonMobil uh, drill in Alaska. So it's possible to say that many oil refineries would have existed in Alaska after the war. And it's also safe to say that Poseidon Energy probably had oil refineries in this location. Uh, maybe they have some oil rigs. Maybe we'll see Enclave again. Who knows? This area would have had to have been full of like this crazy military hardware, uh, both from the former United States military, as well as some of the Chinese military's captured uh, weapons and weapon prototypes and stuff. And we could see a lot of crazy prototype weapons that we haven't seen in previous Fallout games. It's also worth mentioning that I don't think there has really been a full Fallout game uh, that has taken advantage or taken place in a winter setting. And Fallout 4 takes place, I guess, in like mid to late fall, but hasn't actually crossed over into winter yet. It could be interesting to adapt Fallout 4's survival mode in such a way to where the player character needs to stay warm in cold weather where they have to change out certain types of clothes or they have to make modifications to their power armor. That could be pretty interesting in my opinion. Number three, the East Central Commonwealth region. Okay, so this area consists of Kentucky, Tennessee, and Ohio. And as far as I know, no Fallout game or its DLC has taken place in this area. Um, now, in our real world, this area does have some notable population centers. Uh, in Kentucky in particular, you have Louisville and Lexington. In Ohio, you have Cincinnati, Cleveland, and Columbus. And in Tennessee, you have Memphis, Knoxville, Chattanooga, uh, Clarksville, and I'm going to butcher this, but it's Murfreesboro. All of these areas have a population of over 100,000. Uh, Louisville, Memphis, and Columbus in particular have populations over 500,000. As far as some interesting places go, uh, Kentucky is home to Fort Knox, which is home to the United States Bullion Depository, where a significant amount of our gold is stored. Uh, and Fort Knox is relatively close to Louisville, which is Kentucky's largest population center. And this is interesting, but of According to John Henry Eden, who is Fallout 3's Enclave, or if you haven't played the game yet, he's the robot president. Um, while nuclear bombs hit parts of the East Central Commonwealth region, uh, much of the area supposedly remained relatively well intact. And if this is true, then this entire region may have been largely unaffected by the nuclear bombs dropping at all. However, in a way, I think this is sort of unlikely because if the next Fallout game does take place 200 years after the nuclear war, like Fallout 3, New Vegas, and Fallout 4 did, I don't think the region would appear quite as polished. Um, as it would have been before the war. I mean, 200 years can basically mess up buildings big time. Uh, and many of these states, uh, Kentucky and Tennessee in particular, they are rural areas with lots of vegetation. So these places could be like full mutated forests, which would be an interesting setting and would be a big contrast to mostly what we've seen in previous games, which are like these desert-like wastelands. Number two, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, a.k.a. Ronto. In Fallout 3's The Pit DLC, they briefly mention a city called Ronto, which I suspect is a reference to our real-world Toronto location in Canada. Uh, specifically, this Ronto place is mentioned by Ishmael Ashur, who places Ronto's relevance to the Fallout universe on par with Fallout 3's Capital Wasteland and Fallout 4's Commonwealth regions. Uh, for that reason, I think we could possibly see a game in Toronto at some point. Toronto could be an interesting location for a wide variety of reasons. Uh, the first is because Toronto is in Canada, which if you're up on your Fallout uh, lore and stuff, uh, Canada was annexed by the United States in the Fallout universe. So you could have a Fallout game in another country while still having the silly 1950s United States feel and vibe. Um, you would also get to experience the culture of 1950s Canada, which could also be pretty interesting. Uh, now, Toronto is in close proximity to both parts of the United States, as well as Niagara Falls, uh, both of which could be interesting landmarks to visit in a post-apocalyptic setting. And finally, number one, 
the Gulf Commonwealth. Um, this area consists of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida, and no Fallout game or its DLC has taken place here. And according to the Fallout Wiki, um, parts of Fallout Tactics 2 were supposed to take place in Florida. However, that game was ultimately canceled. Uh, in fact, there's very little mention of this area in either Fallout 3 or Fallout 4. So if the developers over at Bethesda Game Studios want to make a more open-ended story, the Gulf would be a perfect location. The reason I say that is there might be less established history, uh, because really Fallout 4 kind of borrowed a lot from the events of Fallout 3 um, story-wise. For example, Arthur Maxon was in Fallout 3 and is in Fallout 4 as commander of the Brotherhood of Steel. Now, the Gulf Commonwealth does have some big and notable population centers in the region. Uh, in particular, New Orleans, Louisiana comes to mind and is the birthplace of jazz music, which could fit with the Fallout uh, 1950s aesthetic. Um, Huntsville, Alabama is home to the U.S. Space and Rocket Center and some other high-tech companies. Um, and of all of these areas, Florida may be the most likely location for a Fallout game as the area does have a very high population and is home to places like Miami and the Everglades. And in our timeline, while it's not a uh, American-owned company or an American corporation, uh, BP or British Petroleum has oil rigs uh, in uh, the Gulf of Mexico, and that could be they could be owned by Poseidon Energy, and we could also see another enclave uh, faction in the Gulf Commonwealth as well, and that would be really fascinating. I've said this before, but I think Poseidon Energy and the Enclave are strongly linked if they are not one in the same. Anyway, guys, that's going to pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like. Uh, let me know of some other places you'd like to see a Fallout game. Uh, Fallout games in other countries could be really interesting, although it may be unlikely, uh, so I guess there is that. Mexico could be interesting because we don't really know what happened to Mexico uh, in the Fallout universe. But again, guys, take care, and I'll see you all next time.